This is the 2014 uh, Level 3 Mechanics paper, question 1. Um, and I've lost my... <laughs> there we go, scrolling. Um, I hope you read all that information at the start, by the way. It's very helpful, and um, if you're precise in following it, it generally means you'll be precise in the way they answer other questions. Carrying on. Question 1, rotational motion. We're given the universal gravitation constant there, and so it's probably a gravity question initially. The radius of the Sun is 6.96 times 10 to the 8 meters. The equator of the Sun rotates at 14.7 degrees per day. Show that the period of rotation of a particle located on the equator of the Sun is that. So we're after the period, um, which is the, um, the, we could do 1 over the frequency, but it's the time for one rotation. One rotation. Um, if this is the equator of the sun, we're given the amount of time it takes to go around one angle, uh, one part of an angle, 14.7 degrees. Um, degrees, and, and that's one day. Shouldn't really write it equals because they're different quantities. One's an angle, one's a time measurement. So we would have to do 360 degrees divided by 14.7, and that's going to give us the number of days. So number of days. Once we have that, to to convert that number of days, which is a time measurement, into um, the number of seconds, we're going to have to multiply it by the number of seconds in a day. So 60 seconds per minute times by 60 minutes in the hour, 3,600 seconds, times by 24 hours in a day, uh, times by the number of days. And that'll give you this, or it should give you that. Um, going on, part two, calculate the linear speed of a, a particle um, at the sun's equator. So linear speed. Linear means we don't worry about it being a vector. Um, and that's because it's changing direction constantly as it, as it travels around in that circle. Um, so we can't calculate it as a, as a vector. We could do an average um, speed, I suppose, which is coming back to this linear speed. But speed is distance over time. The distance is going to be the radius, uh, sorry, the circumference, 2 pi r, of the sun, which um, again is the round there. You've been given the uh, the radius of the sun conveniently, so it's not a diameter. You don't have to do any other tricky little calculations, um, and you just divide that over the oops, I've changed colour, over the the time given to you up there, and that'll be a good calculation. Once you have that linear speed, you may be able to use it later on. So. Remember, use unrounded um, answers in follow-on calculations. B. Gravity may cause the rotating inner core of the sun to collapse down to a much smaller radius. Explain how this will affect the angular speed of the inner core, omega, so um, which is the number of radians per second. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as a concept of um, an, an angular momentum, okay, because always angular momentum. Um, will be conserved whenever anything is rotating and it changes um, in some way. Angular momentum must be conserved. Um, angular momentum is um, uh, in a normal linear momentum. Its momentum is mass times velocity. Linear moment, uh, angular momentum is inertia, which is your um, your your rotational version of mass. We'll leave it at that. Times by um, omega. <laughs> Um, which is your rotational version of velocity. So see how that parallels if you're not familiar. You should be familiar by now if you're practicing questions. Okay, carrying on. Um, our um, omega um, is going to... Uh, oh, okay, we'll, we'll get to that. That's the conclusion. So how it will affect the angular speed. Um, if you're familiar with the example of sitting on a chair and spinning, you're going to increase your speed as more of the mass goes closer to um, the center. Um, so we would expect omega to increase. Um, that's sort of where we're heading, but we want to, rather than just stating it, which might get you unachieved, we want to explain it as well. So then we come back uh, over to our angular momentum. Um, inertia, this is the first point that I'd probably mark, inertia is um, decreasing Okay, with more mass or the V mass uh, concentrated at the center. 
because inertia decreases, angular momentum must, uh, sorry, angular velocity must increase um, if uh, L is conserved. Okay, and there's one final thing that they always want to know about in this, and that's when you, you should state that no external, you're assuming that there are no external forces or torques, which is a force at a distance anyway, but no external forces acting. Okay, moving on. C, the mass of Mercury, Mercury this time, um, is um, 3.30 times 10 to the 23 kilograms. Um, let's just make, make a circle around there. It's a mass. Uh, Mercury has a period of rotation, so T. So again, uh, no, we don't have that. Show that a satellite needs to be positioned that distance from the center of Mercury, so that'll be a radial measurement, um, so that it remains stationary from the point of view of an observer on that planet. So again, the diagram is usually pretty helpful. We've got Mercury rotating in the center, and we've got a, uh, this is my drawing of a satellite, um, so Mercury's rotating on its axes, and we've got the satellite that is rotating um, at the same period. Both have the same period. Okay, that's the way um, that it, the, the satellite would remain stationary from the point of view of an observer on the on the planet. So it's staying over the same point of view on the surface. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're told the period of rotation. Um, there's a couple of formulas that are going to be linked to all the situation that, that might be helpful, so let's just put them down there to jog our thinking. A centripetal force is mv squared over r. Um, we've got the universal gravitation formula, big G for the gravitational constant, big M, which would be the mass of the planet, uh, Mercury, and the small m, which is the mass of the satellite, over r squared. And those two things would be equal to each other. Now the reason I'm using this um, is that we can probably equate them, get rid of one of the unknown masses, because we've got the mass of Mercury, um, but we don't have the mass of the satellite, which is the little m in this situation. Um, and we can use these things to calculate the radius. So let, let's just kind of go with it for now. Um, sometimes these questions, if you can't see the end from the beginning, and the steps to work through, you just have to kind of go with common um, approaches to these sorts of questions, and that comes with experience from practicing exams. So we've got um, mv squared over r equals g m m over r squared, and we're equating these because the centripetal force acting on the um, satellite is going to be the same as the force due to gravity on the satellite. Um, the f that's acting at the radius from there, um, which you'll notice they've stated that this is the distance from the center of Mercury. So we don't actually have to account for the surface and how far it is above the planet and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, we're going to cancel out the mass, small mass that is, of the satellite. We're going to cancel out one of the R squareds on the bottom. Um, and we, there we go, we're going to then um, rearrange for R. So if I do that rearrangement for R, we're going to have R equal, which is what we're trying to find out, the radius, the position above the Earth. R equals G M over V squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and now we've got a bit of a tricky situation where, yes, we've got the gravitational constant, yes, we've got the mass of that, but we don't have V um, at all. Um, I'm going to have to scoot off sideways to continue this one a little bit. Um, how we need to go uh, approach this then is what is V? Um, v is d over t, distance over time, for the velocity. Um, we have the time. Um, we don't have the distance though. So the time is the period that was given to us um, earlier. And uh, d, again in this case, this is an excellent question, we've got a circle the distance is the distance around um, for the satellite, okay, the distance around its path. So we can use 2 pi r and voila, um, you're left with uh, just one unknown which is that r. 
So if we bring that back over to the formula we were using before, let's stick with red because it's getting a little bit confusing with all the colour, we're going to end up with R equals GM over, over this V squared, which is going to be 2 pi R over T, don't forget it's squared, and then we've got a bit of a tricky rearrangement, um, but I'm going to leave that part up to you because this video is already very long, and you can do um, the calculation, or you can do the rearrangement of R, you can end up with 4 pi squared over T squared, and remember a fraction over a fraction, or a number divided by a fraction, um, you end up, uh, I'll just give you one of my little hints that I use for that, so if you had half divided by 2, it's going to equal a quarter, okay, um, or 1 divided by half is going to equal to 2, which is it's more of a second version. So when you've got that one on the bottom there, you're going to multiply it by the top, and that works out what you what you have. Go back to a simple version when you're dealing with awkward rearrangements, something that's really easy to mentally conceive of. Um, anyway, you can follow that through and find the answer for R. Uh, it's coming down in D. I think this is the last question for this part. Yes, um, a space probe spins around on an axis as shown below. Uh, shown, yep, in this. Uh, an instrument comes loose from the space probe, so maybe a part breaks off. Um, explain why this loss of mass will have no effect on the angular speed of the space probe. <coughs> um, a little bit awkward to explain for me personally. Uh, maybe I'll need to uh, swat up on this a little bit better. But um, the concept of inertia, um, each um, individual mass um, has its own... Um, its own angular velocity linked to it, therefore its own angular momentum um, given to that mass proportionately. So uh, L is, um, let's use that word proportionately, proportionally uh, distributed, um, need to give a bit more space to write all this down, L is proportionally distributed um, to each, um, would, would say, inertial component, okay, because remember L equals I omega, excuse me, so the uh, the, the loss of mass, that, that inertia contains mass at a radius, um, that bit of mass at a radius that goes off will take its own little bit of angular, velo angular velocity from the angular momentum, but the rest will also maintain that. Um, yep, I'm going to have to leave it at that because this video is way too long, but uh, use what I've said, go check out the solutions and um, think about that a little bit more. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and I can do a follow-up video to explain that further, but we'll move on to question two in the next video.